Hello everyone, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink, and these are cards I did for a W Plus 9 guest designer post a couple weeks ago. And I thought I would share them here as part of my Christmas card series for this year. So all the stamps are from W Plus 9. I'm starting off with my Mini Misty and some hot press watercolor paper. And then I've got the die set that I've already trimmed out the interior dies that were connected and nested, nested within the larger dies. So I've trimmed those out and I've left all the rest connected because it just makes my life a little bit easier. And then what I did was I placed the dies cutting side down onto my watercolor paper here and then I'm lining up all of their companion images within these dies. So once I've got them all lined up, I'm going to add all these extra little images that have those separate dies. And then I close the lid of my Misty and then I've got all my stamps lined up. I used some anti-static powder on the watercolor paper so that I can ink these images up with some Versa Mark ink, which is just a clear, sticky, slow drying ink. And then I close the lid of my Misty and then I've got all the images stamped at once. Then I can use my Ranger Super Fine Detail White Embossing Powder. I chose this embossing powder because these images are so finely detailed and so small. I wanted the finest embossing powder I had because even my detail embossing powder isn't quite as fine as this. So I chose this one on purpose. And then I let my heat tool heat up and then heat embossed all of these images. So just heated them up until that embossing powder melts. And by letting your heat tool heat up a little bit, it just means that um, you'll get a little bit less warping of the cardstock because heat tool is already hot so that it can melt to the embossing powder faster. So I ended up doing this twice because you know when I've got all the images lined up already, I can just do multiple images over and over and if you wanted to do a dozen or more, <laughs> you could just keep inking up, stamping, inking up, stamping because you've got all your stamps lined up, everything is done for you. So I did two for this and I just quickly tape them down onto a hardboard, just more to hold them in place more than anything. Since I'm not doing a full background, I didn't need to tape it down to keep it flat. It was more just to keep them in place. And then for all the watercoloring, I am using my Mission Gold watercolors and a size four water brush, and I super sped this up. It took about mm, a half an hour to 45 minutes, I think, to watercolor all of these images. And the nice thing too about doing multiples is while the water the watercolor brush is already loaded up with a certain color, like the green for the trees, I can do all the trees at once. So I go and do everything with that one color and then clean my brush and go on to the next. So it just makes things a little more streamlined and a little bit easier. And the nice thing too, when you heat emboss white on white is once you start adding the color, it really makes, you know, the heat embossing just starts to pop. So this set is super fun. I really like it because you can do so many things. You can color these houses any color you want and just get creative with. That was the fun thing. It's like, ooh, what color is the siding going to be? What color is the door is going to be? <laughs> All that kind of stuff. I just, I thought it was so much fun. So I took courses like that when I was in high school, interior design and that sort of thing. And I just, so these kind of brought back some memories when I was coloring them. Because I'm like, ooh, these are, this is the color I would choose. And, you know. So I watercolored in all of these. I wasn't, um super particular with the watercolor either. I just wanted to make sure that everything was filled in. Um, I went a little bit um, to extra lengths to make sure each area was filled in since I'm doing white on white embossing. I didn't really want any um, white space or anything like that because otherwise you're not gonna see any of the detail. But at the same time, they don't need to be perfect because they are so um, such fine little details and everything like that, it can just kind of work. So you can't really see it on camera, but for all the areas of snow, so all the roofs of these little houses and little snowballs and that, I just used a very, very watered down blue, almost pale, like nothing, and just added a little bit of that, just it gives it a little bit of definition. And went along and did each area. The nice thing too with the embossing is I don't have to worry about one area drying before moving on to the next. So once everything was done, and completely dry, you can see I can line up that whole set of dies there. That's all connected super quickly. Added those four little interior dies to their other images, ran this through my machine, and they were all die cut. I had stamped the one um, remaining tree there multiple times just because I had extras. So I ran that through a few more times with that individual little tree die. So I've got um, a few extra little trees. And then I set all those aside and I die cut some white cardstock with the largest die from the four bar stitched rectangles set and of the two remaining pieces, I'm creating some snowbanks. So I started with just a pencil and quickly um, sketched out one little snowbank and then I used my craft knife 
to cut the first little snowbank and then I'm holding it up against my um, background, what's going to be my background piece, just to give me an idea of where this I want the second snowbank to be. And then did the same thing, just quickly sketched a line with my pencil and then I followed that with my craft knife. So, and I'd done that with the remaining, the two remaining pieces of the die cut cardstock because I wanted that stitch line along the bottom just for the continuity. So once I was happy with my snow banks and I made four of them all together because I'm making two cards, I grabbed some distressings from my stash and got to sponging on the remaining two pieces of the die cut rectangles. And I started with some um, scattered straw kind of in the center, the lower center, and just lightly was sponging that on. And then I started adding some tumble glass and started pulling that down from the top. And same thing, I went pretty light with this. Normally I'm pretty heavy handed when it comes to sponging. I like solid color, but I wanted a more soft look. I wanted kind of a glow to, you know, reminisce kind of the lights of the houses and whatnot. And then kind of a darkening sky that's, you know, getting on towards evening. So I started with the tumble glass and then I added blueprint sketch, kind of starting off the cardstock and then pulling it onto the paper. And I went back and forth a few times with the tumble glass and the blueprint sketch just to get a decent blend, but the blend didn't need to be perfect because I'm gonna go over this with what I usually do, which is after I added, um, I added some chip sapphire at the very top and then I spritzed it with my distress sprayer and that's what usually makes it not so, you don't have to have as perfect a blend if you're gonna spray it. <laughs> so the inks of course reacted with the water. So I've got this fun splatter effect, but I wanted to take it another step again. So I've got both my pieces here and I just grabbed my splatter cover. You could use a um, old towel or you know a big old cardboard box, just something to protect your work surface. But I've got my little splatter cubby and then I'm mixing up a bit of Copic Opaque White, which is pretty thick. So I'm watering it down just a little bit just to get it um, to a thinner consistency, but I really like how white this is and it's perfect for this. So I did this on an acrylic block and then I'm just flicking my paint paintbrush across the edges of this acrylic block to create a splatter. And I was really, really heavy handed with this splatter. I wanted it really thick because I wanted it to look like falling snow. So I did it a few times on both pieces to get a really good, heavy, thick splatter and let that completely dry. And now I'm gonna start creating my actual scene here. So I'm going to start adhering everything with a mixture of foam tape and my Tombow Mono Multi Adhesive. So I adhered these snow banks with the foam tape, so they're popped up. And then I laid out um, the scene I wanted to create with all of these little holiday houses and the trees and the snow banks and all that. So once I was kind of happy with um, the layout I created, I got to adhering all these with bits of foam tape and just putting them at different heights to create this fun winter scene. And this was so much fun. <laughs> And then I, like as I was doing it, I was like, I should have stamped more houses and created so I could just create like an entire little city of these. It's they're so fun. I love it. So got everything kind of adhered, popped some up um, with even more foam tape just to give it all this fun dimension and decided not to put any sentiments or anything on the front because this is a four bar size. So it's three and a half by four and seventy inches. Um, I my card base was cut to that. So it's a top folding four bar size card. I adhere to the remaining little house and trees and whatnot on the inside of the card. And then I'm stamping sentiments from the Be Merry sentiments. I stamped the Merry in a light blue and the Christmas in black. So that's where my sentiment is rather than on the outside, it's on the inside. And then I applied a generous amount of adhesive to the back of my card front here because it was warped a bit from the spraying and the heating of like drying all that spray. And then I'm going to adhere that onto my card front and I did that twice. So I end up with two cards in the end. These were so much fun. And then as a final little bit of dimension and embellishment, I grabbed some frosted lace stickles, which of all the stickles, this is the least sparkly. It's more of a texture. It has like a white glitter to it, so it doesn't have that reflective element to it, which works really well for snow in my opinion. So I'm just lightly dabbing, and it's hard to show on camera, but I'm just lightly, lightly dabbing all along like the tops of the houses and the trees, the snow and all that, to create this fun little bit of textured, somewhat sparkly look to give it um, some additional detail. So that finished off my cards for today. I hope you guys enjoyed them. I know I really had fun making them. And all the links to the supplies I used will be in the description box below the video as well as on my blog, which is also linked below the video. So check that out below if you're interested. And I'll have a couple more links here at the end to other videos I've done. Thank you all so much for watching, subscribing, and thumbs up in my videos. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.